Welcome to Case Closed by former Attorney General John Swallow. John Swallow has worked in both the private and public sector. First, as a lawyer for a multinational company, and then as the Attorney General of the state of Utah. Even more powerfully, he defended himself against false charges and beat the government to clear his name. John, thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. I know you, you've been bombarded with questions before and you're gonna get bombarded with questions again right now. But today we really wanna talk about prenups. Um, this is becoming more and more of, I guess, an on-topic thing to talk about with how marriage is in America. And I know that it really goes state by state. So could you help, uh, just help me understand how the state of Utah is with prenups and like what does a typical prenup look like? Well, right. Well, a very good friend of mine has a book he's written called mm. Have It All. Mm. And I like to think about myself as a person who can help people keep it all mm. once they have it and not lose it, right? And so the topic of premarital or prenuptial agreements um, is a, a way that people who've been married before and are coming into a new marriage with significant assets or with one of the marriage spouses has a previous marriage and children from that marriage who are going to want to kind of claim an interest in assets after one of the spouses passes, their father or mother passes. It's a way of preserving the right in property and money in, in a person, a partner who comes into a marriage. And it can happen for people who get married the first time if, they're, if they have a significant amount of money, like a professional athlete or an actor or something who is mm -hmm. worth millions and millions of dollars yeah. at the time they get married the first time, right? So some states are what are called community property states, which means that once you get married, the property of one person becomes the property of another person. Yeah, that becomes very important in those states to have what's called a, a premarital agreement or a prenuptial agreement, right? And the state of Utah is not a community property state, which usually means which means that any property that you come into the marriage with remains your sole property unless you give it to the other spouse, which mm -hmm. can happen if you have a commingled account, for example. So if you have a million dollars in your bank account and you come into the marriage without a prenuptial agreement, and you put your wife as a signer in that account, it becomes her account as well. If you're a man, man, woman, mm -hmm. th that account becomes a joint account and it becomes both of your asset. It becomes very hard to unwind that act. So I guess my first point is, is that if you're coming into a marriage with significant assets, or if your spouse is coming into the marriage with significant assets, you really need to talk to a lawyer about how to preserve those assets because it becomes important for the purpose of inheritance and estate planning and on all those things. It's just, it's a real issue. And if we can help you with that, go to my website at askjohnswallow.com and we'll try to find a way to help you solve whatever problem you have. In Utah, there's a statutory premarital act. Um, and, and so it provides for um, the details of how to form a prenup. It, clarifies that they are valid in Utah law. It talks about when they go into effect, they go effect upon marriage. Um, and it also says that it can be unwind, unwound or rescinded, but to be rescinded, it has to be in writing and signed by both parties mm -hmm. to the marriage. So just one person can't decide to rescind it. So mm -hmm. they're very effective in isolating assets if you do your job and keep them separate anyway, right? The biggest mm -hmm. problem with a prenup is when people commingle their assets afterwards, then it becomes hard to tell which assets are yours, which dollars in the account that's in the joint account are yours and which are hers or hers and his. It's hard to tell. So there are lots of things that require professional guidance and following rules that deal with the whole concept of premarital agreements. Well, and it also sounds like it could be considered a will because there's heirs involved. There's, if this is your second marriage, I guess. Yeah, it's not really like a will. A will is a testamentary yeah. device. It, it goes into effect after you die. Mm -hmm. When I say heirs are involved, it's so, for example, if I have three children from a, a, a first marriage and they're my kids, and then I marry a nice lady with three kids and they're her kids, and I may be their stepfather, when I die, 
I'm probably going to want my assets to go to my wife and my children, not my wife and her children and my children. Does that make sense? Mm. So I'm going to want to maintain my assets separate and distinct. The assets I came into my marriage with. Now, the law in Utah is that any assets that I acquire during my marriage through non-personal assets, right? Like that becomes the property of both of us. All my salary that I make while I'm married belongs jointly to both of us. Everything she makes, every, every dollar she earns, right? During our marriage belongs to both of us as a joint property, right? But the, the property I bring into the marriage or she brings into the marriage, if we have a prenup, right? Or if we keep things separate, remains my own property, her sole property. So for inheritance purposes, I can have a will and I can say, I give my sole property one half to my wife who has a, a half share, four share, and one half to my children. And her children don't inherit. Mm. That makes sense. No, otherwise, nice. otherwise, if I bring a house in and we're both on the title to the house and she owns the house after I die because it's a joint tenancy. And this is very, this is very complicated mm attorney type, you know, understanding, right? Yeah. Okay. So I don't want anybody to think that they can just take what I say here and take it to, and take it, you know, to, yeah. the, you know, and do their own work with it. Okay. You, if you have these complicated situations, you're going to want to have good complicated counsel that will help you sort it out and document it and give you advice about how to keep your assets separate. Because what's very important is in a second marriage in particular, is that the children of the, the, your natural children are able to inherit if you want them to inherit. And if you go and mix all of your assets together, then you're going to be equally um, disposing of bequeathing your assets to everyone in her family, everyone in your family, and then the wars begin. Wow. And that's what you want to be careful of. And that's why we have prenuptial agreements. And, you know, some spouses, I'm rambling here, some spouses are, you know, reluctant to enter into that kind of agreement. You know, they kind of say, well, don't you trust me? And that's yeah. not the point. I mean, any one of us can get hit by a train tomorrow and then we're left scrambling. And that has to do with estate planning, prenups and everything else. We're left scrambling on, on how our assets are distributed post-death. I have a very, I've had a very good friend. I mean, this was a great guy, only 45 years old, recently killed in a plane crash. And fortunately for him, I guess, he didn't have any children and didn't have a spouse, but he passed away without a will. Hmm. So he doesn't get to decide what happens. The state decides what happens with all of his assets. He has family, he has the mom and other family members that survived him. But because he didn't have those types of things set up, mm -hmm. he lose, loses the opportunity to decide what happens with his assets. You don't want to have that experience. If, if something happens to you, you want to make sure you've decided, you've determined what you want have happen with your assets. And a, pre a premarital agreement, prenuptial agreement can go a long way to starting that process. Okay. Well, and the one last question I have for you is I've heard of something called a, like a, postnuptial agreement you're already married you're however long into it and then you set things up that way i've only seen it one time in one movie where they're like oh we're gonna get a post a postnuptial agreement well under utah law um the pre marital mm -hmm. agreement and all the protections require that it be signed by both parties mm -hmm. without duress and before the marriage is consummated so um you know, uh, I think the ultimate post-nuptial agreement mm -hmm. is, um, well, the ultimate one is a divorce agreement, obviously. <laughs> yeah. A door stipulation, right? Where you really divide the assets uh, of the parties. Um, people can agree at any time um, to waive certain rights, certain rights to assets, make certain stipulations about what happens with their assets. People can make agreements like that and waive mm -hmm. rights. So you're probably talking about that type of an agreement where okay. a person can, can say, okay, we're gonna settle our estate right now. We're going to agree to waive any claim to this house and you'll keep that house. And mm -hmm. it's almost like a separation agreement, but people can contract away certain rights um, 
under, under the law, right? Mm -hmm. And sign agreements and those kinds of things. Certainly, they're all susceptible to be challenged. Mm -hmm. You know, there are issues of duress that come into play that people can always raise defenses to agreements that they sign. Uh, and um, certainly there are duties that husbands have to wives and wife have, wives have to husbands. And so whenever you're contemplating any type of an agreement dealing with any of your assets between spouses, you should always seek competent counsel, experienced counsel, and make sure that you're getting it right and that whatever you're agreeing to do is enforceable, legally enforceable. All right. Well, that's all I have for you, John, today. Thank you so much for, I guess, enlightening us with this knowledge because you have so much background, like being a former attorney general and with all your legal background with that multinational company. Thank you. And thank you for coming here for with Case Closed with former Attorney General John Swallow.